the specific proposal within the good agricultural and environmental conditions known as GAEC that this motion has issue with is one that for the first time in the history of the common agricultural policy will differential, differentiate agricultural land, um, calling into question whether carbon rich soils um, will qualify into the future as eligible hectares for payment. In the context, as this has already been alluded to, of European regulations and directives, exact words are incredibly important and they carry very specific meanings. Um, the Council has adopted what many would consider the most extreme wording of any of the party to the negotiations um, that has threatened the agricultural status into the future of many of our family far farmers. And that agricultural standard is what's used to determine whether these lands are eligible hectares. Under the cap, agricultural status and eligible hectares are the words of crucial meaning. Both are sacrosanct to farmers because without which many farmers would no longer be economically viable. Farmers receive their basic farm payments and access to virtually every single agricultural scheme based upon having agricultural status and thus being deemed eligible uh, hectares. And no section of our farming community would accept the move of being moved against the agricultural status of their land. So by differentiating those farmers um, from others now, we're opening the door to further differentiation down the line. Farmers, particularly those in the north and west have been down similar roads with the department before. Natura 2000 designations came with a derogation, but in 2017, of the 927 that were assessed, only 13 were deemed eligible. So with a record like that, I can understand why the department are uninclined to use the term derogation, even though the Assistant General Secretary did refer to it as such at the Agriculture Committee last week. The simple truth of the matter before us is that the wording of this proposal bears a very striking resemblance to that very same derogation regarding the Natura 2000 derogations, a derogation that along with the old rep scheme was used as the carrot to the designations stick. A derogation that in the end screwed and continues to screw farmers with regard to that directive. And here we are today again, the department lining up to give those same communities another kick in the teeth and telling them that it's orthodontic. The department may ask 50,000 farmers um, in essentially to trust them. That's what the minister has asked us to do here this evening. But I have to say if it's a choice between the Department of Agriculture with its record or an organisation like the INHFA. I'll tell you which organisation I trust. I trust the members of the INHFA because they're the people who are familiar with how new regulations overriding old derogations and they're familiar with the explanations as to why an existing derogation can no longer be used. Explanations that often make sense only to mystical interpreters of directives and regulations in the department itself. Farmers are being asked time and time again to meet ever-rising environmental standards and Irish farmers have risen to the challenges time and time again and absorbed the costs by and large within their own margins. So what's required in the next cap is not another attack on Irish family farms but a guarantee that we will support our farmers to continue to deliver for rural Ireland, for the Irish economy and yes, for the environment. Farmers have always delivered for us. What they need now is a minister and a department that will deliver for them. So what we require, as well as honesty and as well as an upfront determined attitude, we need a fair cap. We need to undo, and you've yet to give this commitment, Minister, that you will undo the gross inequality that is at the heart of the common agricultural policy that allows people like Larry Goodman to draw down a half a million euro a year while farmers in your own constituency are struggling to make ends meet on pittance. That needs to be addressed in the next cap and you need to give a commitment that you're going to deliver that. Farmers need fair prices, not the tokenistic and minimalistic approach that you've outlined for the unfair trading practices regulations, which were unimaginative and not ambitious enough in the first place. They need a meat regulator with real teeth to break the stranglehold of the retailers and the processors, and they need fair play. 
They need fair play from the department. The department needs to start seeing the family farmers of Ireland as partners, not as enemies, people to catch out, people to penalise and people to um, put another penalty on. They need the three Fs, as I've said to you on a number of occasions. They need fair play, they need fair prices and they need fair cap. This has to be a new departure for Irish family farming.